Hey, I'm Nick from Nasty Nick's Motorsports. This is part two of our video series on this 300SX that we put a Yamaha engine in. The first video we put a 550SX pump in there, and that was pretty easy. Um, but unfortunately, it just doesn't give us enough uh, power. So we're gonna go ahead and use a 550SX pump shoe conversion kit and put a 750 pump into the ski. Uh, we were able to get a blemish kit from Black Market. Great guy, thanks for, uh, thanks for the deal on that. And we're gonna go ahead and put this pump in here using the X2 ride plate from the first video that we cut up to fit the hole. Uh, we got a couple specialty tools, but for the most part, it should be pretty easy. It's looking like we're just gonna have to do some drilling. So uh, we'll go ahead in the next video, we're gonna see uh, how it fits up. Hey guys, so we're back. So we ran into a little bit of a snag here. When we were test fitting up the shoe here, we realized the shoe, once we get it down in here, it fits pretty good. However, it's hitting the exhaust outlet right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're gonna half moon this exhaust outlet so that we don't have to modify the shoe at all. The reason we're not modifying the shoe is because if we modify the way the shoe sits up here, it's gonna throw off everything going this direction, just causes a bigger, bigger headache than it's worth. And we're thinking that, you know, as long as this outlet can actually release exhaust, it doesn't really matter what shape it is back here. Uh, we ran into another issue also when we uh, went to take the steering cable nut off. We broke it off into the housing, so we're gonna have to find a way to fix that. And a ride plate bolt broke off, but you know, typical old jet ski bullshit. Anyways, uh, we'll uh, check in with you after we do that. All right, guys, that was actually easier than we thought. We went ahead and half moon this pipe, and then uh, we cut it all the way back against the wall. And then this piece, we actually ended up just taking the rear part, uh, an old bow eye from an X2, turned out to be the same thread pitch, that's all it is, and that actually fit perfectly behind here. And all this lined up perfectly. There doesn't look like we have to do any modding at all. Uh, we cut the hole a little bit right there and we did the exhaust, but we're gonna fill it with 5200. It's not a big deal. And then uh, these fit in perfectly. We didn't have to grind any ribs whatsoever. And then we test fit this uh, other jet pump we have that somebody already hogged out some holes on. And uh, everything lines up pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and start bolting it up. Uh, so far, so good. We haven't had to mod anything. All right guys, it's been a long day. So we ended up uh, mounting the jet pump in, pre-drilling the holes for the shoe, and then we went ahead and drilled the shoe into place based on where the pump was. Um, now that back wall right here is at an angle. The shoe kind of went in at a, at a weird angle, but we were able to fill that with silicone, so it's in there pretty good right now. We were able to fix the steering cable by using that bow eye from the, um, from the other section. And uh, we just went ahead and took a stainless screw and screwed the bow eye into the housing itself and sealed it. And that actually did a pretty good job fixing that. A lot of silicone everywhere. It's our first time doing this job. We're not real positive how this whole thing's gonna turn out, but everything's lining up pretty good. The stock intake rate we're using here lines up almost perfectly. We're just gonna have to go ahead and hog out the uh, front two holes up there. And then our next section is gonna be how to get the ride plate on here because the ride plate we planned on using is not exactly right. So we'll uh, check in with you on that section. Hey guys, we're back. So we basically installed the pump similar to the black market video with the exception that we bolted the pump in loosely and then, you know, from that figured out how to place the shoe. But that did give us an unusual error because this wall back here is actually at an angle. Um, it led to a problem where the pump is now slightly tilted, which gave us a problem with the ride plate. So we went through a couple different options here. We tried a stock SXR plate and we tried the 550 plate and trying to do some kind of bracket here, but we ended up back at our original X2 plate we cut up in the other video. So that one actually fits, well, pretty good on there. And we, the intake rate bolts on no problem. We do have kind of a, a gap up here in the front, so we're gonna try to get rid of that by kind of adjusting the height of the plate. But overall, fitting up pretty good, and uh, we're gonna go from there. All right, guys, going from this view, uh, by the way, shout out to my man Bryce here, who spent all day cutting this plate. Um, going in here, looking into the pump tunnel, you can see that there is actually a gap here um, from where that wall is tilted. However, it wasn't so bad that we couldn't just run some silicone around it. Uh, keen eyed viewers will notice we are using a stock prop. The reason for that is pretty simple. Uh, for one, it was on hand, it's cheap, it's nearly worthless, and that one actually has some pretty good clearance. We had a uh, nice scat track prop, however, the clearance on that was too wide, and we just thought, you know, let's go ahead and use stock and see what happens because we're kind of eyeballing what pitch we're, we think we're going to need. Uh, looking it up, that pitch on that stock 750SS prop is somewhere around a 1419, which would be exactly what you would put into a Wave Runner with a similar engine, so we're hoping it works out. Although it's a different jet pump, well, we'll see what happens. So at this phase, we're going to go ahead and start buttoning this thing up. Uh, we did add a 750SS nozzle, and then we do have a pump wedge. These are kind of fun. Uh, this allows us to actually angle the nozzle up or angle it down, depending on which direction you flip this wedge. Um, with that said, we're going to go ahead and put this in here. We're going to try to angle the nozzle up to compensate because 
If looking down at the pump, we do have a slight curvature where it's, it kind of comes to a high side right here because of the jet pump, which will either help us or hurt us depending on whether it overloads or underloads the, uh, the pump. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and button that up together, give it a flip, put the engine in and go give it a shot. Hey guys, uh, so I went ahead and buttoned it up. Uh, what we ended up doing here is I threw about two spacers up here and then three spacers back here. You can see it spaced it up about, I wanna say it's about eight millimeters. So it's got a pretty aggressive angle here. Um, hopefully if these things become popular, somebody will produce some kind of mold and we can get an actual good um, ride plate for this thing. But uh, using this XT plate, it looks like this should function. So we're gonna go out and uh, we're gonna let this dry. We're gonna flip it over, put the engine back inside of it and uh, find a drive shaft that'll fit this pump and that engine. Hey guys, just a close up here. You can see the height difference between the shoe here and the ride plate. Integrate worked good. All we had to do was open up those two holes and then it bolted right on. But uh, you know, dealing with this height difference is why we ended up doing the spacers like this. So the plate's at an angle. We couldn't really space the ride plate up any higher because it made the gap between the hole and the ride plate just bonkers. So we were experimenting a little bit with the SXR stock plate, which does fit it a lot better and with better contours. However, it leaves us no place to bolt it up. We'd almost have to glass and inserts and we just didn't want to go through all that effort. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and try this X2 plate, see what happens. All right guys, we're back. So what we ended up doing is we needed a longer shaft. So we were two options. We either had to lengthen the one we had by about two and a half inches or get a longer shaft and cut it down. So what we did is we went ahead and got a longer shaft and cut it down um, and had a re-spline. So the machine shop did that for us, but they ended up uh, accidentally taking off material from the shaft portion, especially the part that mates around the seals up here. So we had to go find different seals that were the same diameter as the shaft, so it had a nice seal. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put the engine in and go get this thing a shot. All right, guys, we're here at the world famous Body Beach. We're gonna go ahead and test that 750 pump in our 300 SX uh, Yamaha conversion ski right now. See how it does. we're back. Overall, we're really happy with the way the 750 pump did in the 300SX. We highly suggest that anybody doing this build go ahead and start with the 701 because what we did notice is two things. Number one, the 650 motor actually feels a little underpowered now because we now have a pump that can use the actual motor. And we feel like it probably needs a scoop grate because when you're going over a chop, that small pump tunnel in the 300SX tends to lose suction. Overall, it's a really fun ski. We're really happy with the way this project turned out and we hope you guys enjoyed watching it. See you around.